Family Theater presents Bob Hope. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents It Isn't Cricket. And now, here is your host, Bob Hope. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world, Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, It Isn't Cricket, featuring Richard Peel as Vince. Strike three, says strike three. Now, Mabel... And you could have driven a truck between the plate and the catcher. Mabel, it's senseless to argue the point now. The game's lost. It's already down in the books. Then I say burn the books. But it's just one game. The season's young. Lady umpires, I'll bring it up at every league meeting till I'm dead. Oh, now, Mabel, will you please... We got lady baseball players. We should have lady umpires. I don't think there's much chance of that being adopted. Ten years ago, they said there'd never be such a thing as a lady manager, didn't they? I know. Well, I made it, didn't I? You don't have to shout, Mabel. Lady umpires, you wait and see. Not a man on the field unless he's selling popcorn. Will you please lower your voice? Mr. Easton will be here any minute. What does he want to see me for anyhow? I should be out hitting grounders. He has every right to see you. He's the new owner. I got a contract. It's not about the contract. He just wants to meet you and the other girls. The new owner. Why shouldn't Mrs. Barrett have left the club to someone who knew something about the game? I'm sure I don't know, Mabel, but he is her nephew. He does own the team and we might just as well make the best of it. Yes? Mr. Easton to see you, Mr. Willis. Okay, send him in. Yes, sir. The new owner. Mabel is a favor to me. Please don't start anything. Mr. Willis. Oh, come in, come in, come in, Mr. Easton. A pleasure to meet you. How do you do? And this is our field manager, Miss Mabel Armstrong. Miss Armstrong. I'm honored. Howdy. That's an appropriate name for a baseball player. Armstrong? Ain't it, though? Uh, of course, uh, Mabel doesn't really play with the team. Not that I couldn't. Yes, Mabel, now look. It's just that I want to give the younger girls a chance. Oh, I understand perfectly, Miss Armstrong. Well, Mr. Easton, what would you like to see first? The girls under 30, that is. Uh, yes, it? yes, Mabel, well, yes. Well, uh, Mr. Willis, I, I... I should tell you and Miss Armstrong that I, I don't know too much about baseball. Uh -huh. I wasn't very athletic as a child, and then early in life my parents sent me to England to study. I can't imagine why Aunt Catherine left this organization to me. You ain't the only one, Sonny. Mabel. Oh, that's perfectly all right, Miss Armstrong. I appreciate your frankness. And I'm willing to learn, but uh, all I really know is that, that baseball is a good bit like cricket. Isn't it? Uh, Rather? Like a cricket? <laughs> no, not a cricket, Mabel. Cricket, cricket, the game. I never heard of no game played with little bugs. I'm afraid you misunderstand, Miss Armstrong. This is a British sport, cricket. It has uh, bowlers and, and, and batsmen, much as you have, I think, in baseball. They ain't no bowlers on my team. No, no, that's like the pitcher, Mabel. Yes, yes, I, I believe that would be the comparable position. So, you see, I'm not entirely unfamiliar with this type of sport. Yeah. Uh, by the way, when... Uh, when might I see a match? A what? A match. A, a, a baseball match. See the team play. Oh, well, there's a game tonight, Mr. Easton. In fact, the girls are playing a doubleheader. Playing a home? A doubleheader ain't a home. It's a what? It means two games. Oh, great heavens. I, I had visions of some awful freak. <laughs> well, it's just slang, Mr. Easton. You'll get used to it. I expect. Oh, incidentally, Mabel, have you decided on the batteries for tonight? I have, and nobody but me is going to know which they are until the game starts. Oh, I say, Miss Armstrong, do you think that's quite fair? What do you mean, fair? Uh, look, Mabel... Well, after all, I mean, it's a night game, and if you're... If you're going to keep everyone sitting in the grandstand out there with no lights on till you decide which batteries to use... Oh, mother dear. Well, after all... Uh, Mr. Easton, these batteries don't have any electricity in them. Oh, well, then I think they should be replaced. I, I mean, what use is a battery if it doesn't have any... We uh... mean the player's batteries, the pitcher and the catcher. Oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. You get it now? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but tell me, uh... Yeah? Well, are the, uh, the, the, the pitcher and the catcher the only players that carry lights? They don't carry lights. They don't use lights. Oh, I see. Well, well that would explain why their batteries needn't have any electricity. What? Yeah, that's the reason. Oh, I knew I'd get the hang of it. 
Willis, I'm going down to the locker room. I feel a little tired. Well, I hope I haven't said anything to upset you, Miss Armstrong. No, 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 no. I just figure we're in for quite a season, and I want to keep up my strength. Well, I'll see you at the match tonight, then, Miss Armstrong. Yeah, the match. Uh, I mean the uh, two sculler. You double header. They did quite. Uh, good luck, Miss Armstrong. Oh, quite. Oh, my, she's a, a hearty sort. <laughs> what? Well, Mabel's got a few rough edges, but she's far and away the best manager in the circuit. The circuit? Yeah, why? Well, I, I'm a fool to ask, but I suppose there's no electricity in that either, eh? <laughs> no, nah, it's just more slang. You'll get onto it. No, I expect. I, I hope you won't think me a nag, but... No, no, not at all. You ask anything you want. Well, are our batteries uh, in any way connected to the circuit? Well, yes, uh, currently... Oh, currently? Oh, 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 then, then why can't the current go through the circuit to the batteries and then... No, no, no I'm afraid I've misled you, Mr. Easton. Oh. No, there, there's no electricity involved. Words like battery and circuit, they're just baseball slang. Oh, no, quite, quite, I understand. Good. Well, uh, suppose I pick you up at your hotel tonight after dinner and we'll go over and watch the game together, huh? You'll catch on in no time. Oh, I'm sure I shall. Well, I'll be toddling along. Thank you again, Mr. Willis. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Easton. Oh, uh, just one thing. Yeah? I understand perfectly now about no current really being in the batteries and the, the circuits and whatnot. That's right, it's just slang. Uh, yes, quite, but uh, that being the case... Yeah? Well, for these night matches, uh, how do you light up the stadium? Excuse me. Yes? Uh, oh, don't get up. I wonder if I could ask you a favor. Why, uh, certainly. Could I share this table with you? Well, yes, by all means, if you want. I know it seems forward to come up like this to a total stranger. Oh, not at all, not at all. The dining room's quite crowded. Well, you see, I've got to be at the ballpark by 7.30, and if I don't eat now... Did you say the ballpark? Oh, yes. To see the double header between the Doves and the Hawks. Girls baseball. Oh, I say this is ripping. Oh, what's ripping? I, I mean, it's smashing, really. That's just where I'm going. Oh, easy now. Oh, no, 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 honestly. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. Vincent Easton, new owner of the Doves. Aunt Catherine left them to me. Aunt Catherine left what to you? Oh, all the Doves and the, 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 the batteries and the circuits and whatnot. Are you kidding, mister? No, no, I'm quite serious. Here, look, look at this newspaper clipping from last night's paper. Here, read it yourself. Uh, new owner of Doves flies in from New York. Yeah, Vincent Easton. See? Me. Well, you sound kind of English. Well, I ought to. I've lived in England most of my life. See there, bottom paragraph. <laughs> well, how about this? Now, I'm going out to see my first match tonight. What? I, I mean, uh, uh, header, a uh, game. <laughs> I'm not quite on to all the language of it yet. Uh, you've never seen a baseball game? Oh, now don't you start on me too, please. Well, it's it just so strange. Well, I've already made a fool of myself in front of Miss Armstrong and that, that Willis chap. You mean you don't know anything about baseball? Except for one or two fine points, like, uh, oh, the batteries that the pitcher and the catcher carry. And the what? I expect they're for ballast or some such. They won't light anything. Oh, mister, you're in trouble. Oh, how's that? Well, uh, uh, this is a tough business. I mean, uh, I'm just a fan, but running a girls' baseball team, you've got to know your way around. Oh, I realize I've got a lot to learn. I, I don't even know fifth base from the catcher's mound. Look, would you like to come out to the game with me tonight? Oh, I was, uh... I was going to ask if I might. Maybe I can explain a little of what it's all about, anyhow. Would you? Would you really? Well, it, it looks like someone's got to help you. Oh, I'd be eternally grateful, Miss... Uh, it, uh... It is, Miss. Uh, yes. Smith. Jill Smith. Smith. <laughs> you know, that's a very common name in England. Yes, it's uh, pretty well known over here, too. <laughs> My, my, oh, this is awful. Awful? Well, there, that's four separate times one of the girls has knocked a ball out of the park, and I, I happen to know what they cost. Oh, Vincent, that's good. She hit a home run. They're tied up now, last of the night. Well, that's all very well, but the expenditure of equipment involved seems simply prodigal. Vincent, home runs are what people pay to see. That's one of the reasons the game is exciting. Oh, I expect, I expect. Who's up now? Nellie Bowling. Oh, yes. Uh, she's the real spark plug of your team. Spark plug? Oh, well then... Uh, no, no. She's not the one who powers the batteries. <laughs> it was just a thought. Uh, you've just got to stop thinking that everything on a baseball team is electric. Well, then why do they use all those terms? Well, I don't know. I never thought about it. Oh, now watch the game. 
The Hawks are sending in a new pitcher. Well, what's the matter with their old one? Uh, the Doves have gotten to her for five hits in one inning. Well, that's what I mean. Can't we have her stay on and give us a few more? Well, they don't want to give us a few more. They're sending her to the showers. Oh, I see. Bad girl, wash out your mouth sort of thing. <laughs> no, just your out-of-the-game sort of thing. The shower's optional. Oh, so it should be. She might like a tub. Oh, look. The Doves are putting in a pinch hitter. Lefty Kiska. Oh, is that permitted? Why, of course. Well, it seems most unladylike. Unladylike? Well, I mean, pinching and, 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 and hitting and whatnot. Well, after all, if we can't win without resorting to violence... No, 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 uh, Vincent. A pinch hitter is just a substitute. Someone who comes in to bat for someone else. Oh, 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 I see. Well, that's champion. Who, who's she replacing? Uh, the pitcher. Oh. Oh, then we'll have to muddle through without a pitcher from here on. No, Mabel's got another warming up down in the bullpen. The bullpen? That's just a figure of speech, Vincent. There's no real pen. It's just a section of the field where the pitchers warm up. Oh, I understand, I understand. Uh, you'd think they'd parade them around the field, though, wouldn't you? I mean, give the fans a look at them and... What are you talking about? Uh, with the bulls. I mean, after all, if they're so tame, they don't even need a there pen. There aren't any bulls. Not one in the whole baseball park, not a single bull. Oh. Oh, well, that would explain the absence of the, uh, pen. Oh, Vincent, I'm beginning to wonder if there's any hope at all for you. Well, <laughs> listen here, Jill, I, I, I've been meaning to ask you ever since we got here tonight. Ask me what? Well, well, you say you've just got into town and you're, you're, you're planning to take a job with an insurance company. Oh, I've already promised to. But you haven't started yet. Uh, no, but I... Well, 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 would you consider coming to work for me uh, as a sort of... Uh, confidential secretary and, and, and baseball expert and that sort of thing? Work for you? I'm quite serious. I, I can't go bumbling about and bothering Willis and that, that, that Armstrong woman every time I have to ask a stupid question. Well, Vincent, Well, I... there's so much I have to learn. And then, too, now and again, I, I'm sure to be sending out a letter to someone and you could help with that. Oh, I don't Then it think... wouldn't be for long. Once I got the hang of things, you could... you could take another position. If you wanted. But these first few weeks are going to be a horror. Well, Oh, please, I... say you'll help. I'll pay you a good salary and bonuses. Oh, that isn't the point. Oh, well, everyone in baseball gets bonuses. I understand it's quite common. Oh, I... I suppose since I haven't started to work for the insurance people yet, I... I oh, could... you... you're marvelous. Oh, that's champion. Oh, look! Lefty connected with the first pitch. Oh, I say. Up, up. thing I want you to do with my secretary. Keep count. Of the home runs? Of the lost balls. I'm going to find out just how expensive this business of winning games is. Mr. Easton's office. Yes, this is his secretary. No, he hasn't come in yet, but... Jim, Jim is this you? How many times have I told you not to call me here? He'll be in any minute. Yes, yes, I'm trying to get the information you want. But someone's coming. I'll call you tonight. I still say we'll be out of the pennant race in a week if you don't do something. Mabel, will you please? Oh, good morning, Jill. Good morning. Miss Smith? Mr. Willis, Miss Armstrong. Howdy. Jill, we'll be in conference in my office until almost noon. I won't be taking any calls. I understand. Unless there's one from a Mr. Carruthers. If he phones, put him right through. Very well, Mr. Easton. It's very important. I will. Well, let's start the wait. Oh, indeed. Come right in. Well, I, for one, don't think you have to take such a gloomy view of things, Mabel. Oh, you don't. No, I don't. I think the girls are playing pretty They're good. They're playing fine, but they ain't winning enough. Say, Vince. Yes, Mabel? What's the name of that secretary of yours again? Now, no, Mabel, don't start that her up. Her name's with... Smith, Miss Jill Smith. Why? I've seen her somewhere. Of course you've seen her somewhere. She's been sitting out at that desk for the last three weeks. I mean somewhere before that wise guy. Well, what about her? Oh, Mabel is always suspecting we got spies or something. Well, we've had them before, and I've seen this kid somewhere. I'll bet a million dollars on it. Oh, I'm quite convinced of Miss Smith's loyalty. Mabel, let's stick to the matter at hand, huh? Now, you think we have to add to our pitching staff, isn't I it? know we do. Now, Vince, I understand that you're trying to hold expenses down, but... It's not a it's... case of trying to, Mabel. We've simply got to or go out of business. You should see what the auditors found in the books. Well, I don't get it. When Kate Barrett ran this club, we was in the black. Yeah, it seemed we were in the black. I'm afraid Aunt Catherine had a better head for sports than she did for business, Mabel. In the last two years, the team ate up most of her savings. I just can't believe it. She just didn't want to fire anyone or cut any salaries. Well, we're playing to good crowds this year, aren't we? Up 8% from last year, according to the figures. If it continues to hold at that level. That's just what I'm getting at. 
If we don't shore up that pitching staff, before you know it, we'll be out of the first division, and you know what that does to attendance in this league. Well, this girl, Ellis, uh, that you want to get from the Tartans, you think she'd turn the trick? Well, now, one pitcher don't make a staff, but she's a solid workhorse. Rotating her, Grady and James are starters, plus the relief work we can count on from the others. Well, we might squeak through. Yeah, if Carruthers will trade her, and if the price is right. What do you think he'll ask for her, Mabel? The moon. But if you play it right, you can probably get it for 20000 plus maybe an outfielder. Great, Scott, that's a lot of money. It ain't near what you lose if that gate starts slipping. Well, I don't suppose it can do any harm to at least negotiate with the... I should think Carruthers could use a power hitter more than the money. What if we offered him Lefty Kiska? I'll offer him your head and a plate first. Oh, now, Mabel. Oh, excuse me. Yes, Jill? It's Mr. Crothers on line three, Mr. Easton. Oh, put him right on. Yes, sir. And Jill? Uh, yes, Mr. Easton? Stay on the line and transcribe the conversation, will you? I want a record of all the details. Certainly. All right, I'll take the call. Hello? Mr. Carruthers! <laughs> Hi, honey. Hello, Jim. Come on in. Say, this is kind of a nice little place you've got here. Well, I can afford it. Mr. Easton pays me a very nice salary. Fine. You aren't getting stuck in this guy, are you? Oh, don't be silly. Okay. Well, how'd it go today? Uh, Jim, I... Well, I don't know if, if this is right at all. Look, honey, we want to buy the ball club. So we got to know what's going on there, what kind of an operation it is. I know, is. but this doesn't seem honest. Okay, and if old Lady Baird had tried to run the place like a business, maybe we wouldn't have to do this. I'm not going to buy into a club that's a sure money loser. You wouldn't want us to do that, would you? No. Okay. So now, what happened with Carruthers this afternoon? Oh, here's a transcript of the phone conversation he had with Vince. They strike a deal? Not yet. Read it yourself. It's all there. All right. Well, it looks like your boss really needs a pitcher, huh? And Carruthers <laughs> seems to know it, too. <laughs> it's kind of funny, huh? Well, I don't think so. Okay, okay. Honey, where do you think the Doves will finish this season if they don't get Ellis? Oh, it might cost them another 15 games. And maybe drop them into second division? Yeah, it's possible. Hey, do you think this boss of yours would be more inclined to sell the club if it didn't do so well this year? What are you getting at? Nothing, I'm just asking. Well, I... Oh, he's... Learned a lot just in the few weeks since he took over, but the club's in the red. And it's going to get worse if they don't finish strong this year? Well, Vince owns most of the stock, but there's almost no cash reserve. I think he'd have to sell. Uh-huh. Oh, incidentally, you need this? Uh, no, it's an extra copy you can have. Thanks, honey. Look, I won't be seeing you until sometime next week. How come? Well, I'm going to go upstate for a couple of days, scout around a little over the weekend. Oh, all right. Maybe I'll have some good news for you when I get back. <laughs> Well, there goes the ball game. Oh, if we just could have held them down. Mabel's right. It's the pitching. We seem to be able to score when we have to, but we can't stop the other teams from doing the same thing. And a lot more of it. Well, I say cross our fingers. If we don't get that Alice girl by the 4th of July, we are in trouble. Yeah, I was saving that bad news until after the game. Hmm? Did you hear from Carruthers? There was a wire waiting for me at the hotel when I stopped off for dinner. Ellis isn't for sale. Hmm. You mean he upped the price on you? No, huh? no, I tried that myself. I called him long distance at home. Said we go to 25 and throw in two players. He just isn't interested. But I... Well, I thought the deal was practically set. So did I. But apparently something has changed Carruthers' mind over the weekend. The weekend? And I can't change it back. I don't understand it. Alice is good, but she's only got a season or two left in her. You'd think Carruthers would have jumped at the offer. No, no, he was adamant. Did... Did he make any counter-proposal? No. And... That rather surprised me. Hmm? Well, every so often during the negotiations, Carruthers offered to cut the price for Ellis down to practically nothing if we'd include Lefty Kiska in the trade. And he didn't say anything about that tonight when you talked to him? No. Huh? No, it's strange, too, considering how desperate I must have sounded. But he didn't mention her. Hmm. Uh, uh, Vincent, will you be needing me for anything more tonight? Oh, no, no, Joel. Uh, I'll drop you at home. No, you don't have to do that. Oh, that's no trouble at all. Well... I've got an appointment with someone, so I won't be going home right away. Oh, well, I can give you a lift. No, it's all right. I'm late now. I'll see you in the office tomorrow morning. Good night. Good night. Good night, Mr. Willis. Good night, Joe. Well, that was a hurried exit. Do you suppose anything's wrong? 
Well, whatever it is, it can't compare to the trouble you've got. Well, she seemed very upset to learn that we couldn't get Ellis. Well, if you think that was something, wait till you see how Mabel takes the news. Oh, by Jove, that's right. She doesn't know yet. Well, let's go down and get it over with. <laughs> Oh, Jim. Oh, hi, honey. Hey, I thought you were going to wait for me at your apartment. I had to talk to you right away. I think it's smart being seen together this close to the ballpark. Where's your car? What's oh, out in the parking lot. Come on. Jim, were you up in Spencerville this week? Yeah, I passed through there. Why? And you saw Carruthers? So what if I did? Jim, that wasn't fair. What are you talking about? What did you promise Carruthers if he wouldn't sell Ellis to the Doves this season? Oh, now, look. You must have promised him plenty. Vince offered to go as high as 25000 for her. All right. Keep your shirt on. I told him he could have Lefty Kiska for a flat cash deal next year if I own the Doves by then. And you figure to get them pretty cheap if they keep on losing? Okay, so I did a little shop trading, but I did it for us. Come on, get in. I don't want that sort of thing done for me. Look, it goes on every day. So does larceny, but there's still a law against Jill. it. Jill! I don't want any part of this, Jim. Oh, calm down, will you? It's done and you can't change it. Come on, I'll take you home. I thought for a moment that you'd seen us. No, I don't think so. It's pretty dark. Gee, I'm, I'm sorry, Vince. I, uh, it seems Mabel was right about her after all. I guess it's my fault. Well, these things can happen. I don't suppose you recognized her boyfriend? No. No, I didn't. Jim Gates used to be a pitcher with the big leagues. He's been trying to buy the club from your aunt for the last two years. She... She must... Love him very much. Hmm? Jill. To do a thing like this for him. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I, I... I was rather proud of the way she stood up to him, though, you know, about the Carruthers business. She didn't like that. No. But he had the last word. How's that? It's done. We can't change it. Who's calling, please? Uh, just a moment. I'm not sure he's in yet. Vince. Yeah? It's Reynolds from the sporting goods outfit. You want to speak to him? Uh, oh, no, no. No, say I'll call him back later, would you? Yeah. Uh, hello? I'm sorry, Mr. Reynolds, but Mr. Easton hasn't come in yet this morning. Can I have him call you? Yeah. Okay, fine. Uh, I'll give him the message. Bye. What do you want? Like the others, sell you some equipment. I... I think we'd better make do for the rest of this season with what we have. Let the next owner worry about it. Look, Vince, you're letting us hit you much too hard. We're still in business. The Doves are, are a good enough team. I expect so. Oh, it's, it's just that I seem to have lost my interest in baseball, I guess. Yeah, I know it's been a bit of disappointment about Jill, but, well, she's not the only girl in the world. No. But she might as well be. Come in. What's the idea of getting me out of bed at 8.30 in the morning? Oh, hello, Mabel. Don't you know I work nights? Look, will you lower your voice, please? I got a headache. You've got a headache. Oh, Mabel, no. How do you think I feel after the bad news from Carruthers last night? Well, I'm afraid it's not over yet. There's more. Well, you can't fire me. I got a contract. Nobody's firing you. It's Miss Smith who's being fired. Is that why she ain't out at the desk? No, she ain't come in yet. But you were right about her. She's a spy. What did I tell you? I knew I'd seen her. She's in with a man named Jim Gates. Gates? And he's the one who talked Carruthers out of trading Ginger Ellis to us. Gates? That's where I heard the name. You should have. He's been trying to buy the club for two years. No, no, I mean her name's Gates. Jill Gates. Yes. I rather imagine she'd be his wife. Vince! You, you're fired. I don't want to talk to you. Fired? We saw you in the parking lot last night, Miss Smith. Well, that's what I want to tell you about. There's nothing more to say. You're fired. I knew I'd seen you before, sister. You tried out last spring with the Hawks. I was up in the grandstand. Well, that's right, Miss Armstrong, but what, I... What do, you, what do you mean, tried out? Tried out for what? The pitcher. She's a southpaw. Oh, they was going to sign her, too. You... You're a lady baseball player? Well, I was going to try it. The hardest-looking rookie I ever saw. How come you didn't sign with him? Well, Jim didn't want me to, but now I'd like to try. I take it you mean Jim Gates, your husband. My husband? Gates ain't a husband. He's her older brother. You... Your brother? Well, he's the one who taught me how to pitch. Then you aren't married? Well, of course not. 
And I wondered if maybe I couldn't help out on the team. This kid has got a fireball. You can't see. You just can't see oh, it. I know, Ginger Ellis, but, but I thought if you really needed an extra picture... Oh, this is wonderful, wonderful. Oh, darling. Well, will you really let me help, Vincent? I want to very much. Let you? I'll say we'll let you. We'll keep you busy for the rest of the season. Oh, has this kid got a fireball? It just flames at you. Vincent, I... Uh, I want to make up for what Jim and I have done to you. Oh, there's nothing to make up for, Jill. Oh, no, I, I wanted him to own a club if it would make him happy, but... Well, well, well then we'll let him own some of this one. There's, there's no reason for one man to hold all this stock. I'll, I'll, I'll sell him half interest or something. It can be a sort of family affair. Oh, oh Vince. I'm so ashamed. Oh, now, darling. Oh, because it... Well, it was sneaky, and, and... Well, I guess they'd say in England... It wasn't cricket. Well, no, it... But, well, now, when you come to think of it, it it shouldn't be cricket. No? No. No, it should be baseball. This is Bob Hope again. You know, when most of us think of families that don't stay together, we think of broken marriages. And that's not always the main problem. Pick up your tabloid. What do you read about? Kids. Some of them pretty far gone. Kids who've been duped into dope. Kids who pushed that hot rod of theirs just a notch too far and at the last minute couldn't stop in time. And don't get me wrong, I'm not one of those guys who thinks the younger generation's getting worse every year. But I do think there's a way we could all help that generation to get a lot better. That's right, through family prayer. The whole family. Dad, mom, sis, brother, all hands folded just long enough to thank God they're a family. And dad, good example is a mighty powerful thing. None of our old bones can take the punishment they used to, but if we pick out a soft spot on the carpet and let ourselves down easy, well, after all, God built our legs to bend at the knees, so he must have wanted us to spend some time in that position. And it works. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed, It Isn't Cricket. Bob Hope was your host. Featured in our cast were Richard Peel, Marjorie Bennett, Herb Vigran, Charlotte Lawrence, and Herb Ellis. The script was written and directed by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of family theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Larry Chatterton expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The End of Dirty Eddie, starring Wallace Ford and William Campbell. Natalie Wood will be your hostess. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network, this is Mutual, the radio network for all America.